So, the big question, well, should you buy a boat? Now, the market for boats has gone through substantial changes. We've been through a prolonged recession culminating in the national uncertainty over Brexit, and boats tend to go up for sale when uh, things aren't going well. They're underused assets. So, will you be buying something that's worth very little in the future? Can you have faith in the future of the waterways now they're run by a charity. Are you safer buying something second-hand that's already lost its premium price, or is a, a new boat a better option? Where will the money come from, and how do the sums add up? So unless you're listening to a boat salesman, it's clear that owning a boat is not quite the investment today. It might have been a couple of decades ago. When we bought our first boat well, over 20 years ago, we didn't expect to make money on it. Uh, as we could have done on a property, but neither did we expect to lose as much as we knew we would on a new car, for instance. Boats sat somewhere between a house and a car, and if you spent money on improving them, you might even get some of that investment back when it came time to sell. Yet, boats aren't bought and sold like houses. Then and no, <clears throat> they're sold like cars. And you stand as much chance of buying a boat with problems as you do of buying a road car and with as little comeback. That's not aimed at frightening any prospective buyers, it's just a reminder that buying a boat is very much a case of buyer beware. You need to be fully informed of what's on the market, exactly what you can expect to get from a broker, and how much it's going to cost you over and above the purchase price. However, there may never be a better time to buy a boat. If things all go swimmingly, prices will, will shoot up. Um, once the country begins spending money again. But um, let's start with where we are now. If you want to buy a boat of any sort, from a surfboard upwards, you're about to, come to become part of the tiny 2.7% of British households which own a boat. That's according to the British Marine Federation. Now that's just over a million craft of some sort, but six out of 10 of them are canoes or small sailing boats or windsurfers even. The remaining half million in round figures are mostly coastal craft of some sort, yachts and things, but uh, according to Canal and River Trust, um, there are about 36, 37,000 boats on their waterways, and that's grown a lot since, uh, say, 2000, when there were around 25,000 of them. Uh, the number of new, issue, uh, new licenses issued, though, by Canal and River Trust or British Waterways before them peaked in about 2008, at around 2,000. Since then it's nearly halved. So what do all those numbers tell us when it comes to deciding whether to spend your hard-earned cash on a boat now? Well first of all it shows that this is really a small marketplace with just a thousand or two boats changing hands each year. Check through the boating magazines and you'll see there are perhaps half a dozen big brokers dominating the inland waterways market maybe two or three times that number of smaller operators. Now, most big towns have more car dealers than that. The second point is that uh, it's, it is a buyer's market at the moment, so there are people seeking to sell their boats more so than in the past. Now, that's partly because boating's a hobby and uh, it's attracted many middle-class, fairly well-heeled families who may, may be feeling the pinch a bit as the as public sector jobs go and pay is frozen and the future price of the house is not quite so rosy perhaps as it might have been. Uh, Simon Jenkins, uh, who runs Norbury Wharf here, um, reckons prices are probably down 10-15% over the last couple of years and that's made the finance companies offering boat mortgages uh, very nervous and almost taken them out of the marketplace. But, if you're unaffected by those sorts of factors, it may be a good time to buy. There are bargains out there, and the experts tell me there are even bigger dis discounts to be had at the top end of the market. But do bear in mind that the cost of boat ownership doesn't stop when you hand over tens of thousands of pounds and become the proud owner. It's easy to fall in love with the idea of boating, and with individual boats, but you have to know you can afford it. Over a period of two or three years, 
Um, boats can fall in value by, by a quarter even. And you'll have spent around four and a half thousand pounds a year each year on the, actually keeping the boat afloat. Now, that's a survey of boat owners show that's their average spend. Um, 2,300 on mooring fees, 900 on license fees, 500 on maintenance, 300 on fuel, another 300 on insurance, another 100 on safety work. And of course, those license fees have, were pushed up well above the rate of inflation for a number of years, although those, that's eased off now. Um, we might see it again in the future though, because Canal and River Trust has a, a fixed government income and deteriorating assets. So that's facing rising costs and uh, many fear those will be passed on to boaters. So if you've spent 40 grand on a boat, you'll be paying out 10% of that initial investment every year. And you'll also see over a period of say four years, it's value fall by 10 grand. If you buy a boat for 30,000, keep it in tip top condition, we could probably still put the market, put it on the market for 30,000 in a couple of years time, but it's difficult to prejudge that. And it's uh, keeping the boat in the best possible condition um, will cost a lot more than just 500 pounds on maintenance. You have to keep that paintwork sparkling and correct any faults that develop. So you may well have paid out say six or eight thousand over a couple of years of using the boat. So even then, it's not a bad price to pay, is it? For several family holidays and a few weekends, about three or four thousand a year. If you compare it with spending an equal time abroad, you won't be getting an appreciating asset, but you will get a good boat at a good price and have a lot of fun. So there are already fewer boats being used for cruising and traveling shorter distances. Um, a few years ago, around 200 boats a month were being bought across the inland waterways. Currently, it's probably half that. And whether you become one of those buyers depends very much on your personal situation. If you have the money available or the impeccable credit history you needed to borrow it, then you have to be reconciled to paying out a few thousand a year in cost and depreciation in order to have several wonderful holidays and weekend breaks. So if you're in that position, this really is the time to go for it. But really, all those words of caution have nothing to do with what's essentially an emotional decision to buy a boat. All these facts and figures fall on deaf ears when people have really fallen for the waterways. If you want to be a boater, you'll find a way to buy a boat. The exceptionally low prices now available will just get you out on the water as quickly as possible. Come and join us. Have fun.